We start with some breaking news out of Lakeside where an overnight standoff is over this morning. A suspect was taken away in an ambulance. Deputies got a call of an armed man who barricaded himself inside a home on High Ridge Road. This is west of the 67. This happened at about 930 last night. We're told at one point gunfire was exchanged between deputies and the suspect. No deputies were hurt. The standoff ended at about two o'clock this morning. We are working to confirm how it all ended. Good morning to you on this Monday. I'm Stella Escobedo. Thank you so much for getting up with us. I'm glad you're here. I'm Heather Myers in for Eric Connor this week. And as far as the news is concerned, we're going to jump here and straight into your top story. There are some renewed concerns this morning about coronavirus cases. At the same time, many businesses continue to reopen. News Ace Netta Rompour joins us live with a look at where we stand right now, as well as what is next. Good morning, Netta. Good morning. Yeah, you may have noticed over the weekend a lot more businesses have reopened. That includes many bars, gyms, museums. They all got the green light to open if they choose to. And this Friday, you'll be able to go to a nail salon, get a massage, even get a tattoo. But county health officials do want to warn you that they are monitoring several triggers here in our area. And if they see those triggers popping up, that could mean closing some businesses back up again. The fact that these businesses may reopen next week doesn't mean the crisis is over. County leaders are stressing that as these large scale reopenings are occurring here across San Diego, they are closely monitoring a series of potential triggers and that would signal an alarming uptick in COVID-19 cases. That's what they're watching for. So they're currently watching for ICU capacity, availability of PPE and very importantly, the number of community outbreaks. They do say last week in seven days, there were four such community level outbreaks. They have seen them at restaurants at individual homes at parties in office building and in unauthorized weddings. Now seven such outbreaks over a rolling seven day period would trigger the need to potentially take action. And again, that would be the need to close up some businesses again. Now coronavirus infections are rising in more than 20 states, mainly in the south and in the west. Weeks after many beaches and businesses reopened, three of the nation's most populous states, including Texas, Arizona and Florida, hit record highs this weekend for the new COVID-19 cases. In Arizona, you see 1,500 cases recorded recently. Um, in, in Florida, 2,600. California, 3,700. To put that in perspective, at its peak of the epidemic in New York City, there were 5,000 cases a day recorded. Meanwhile, Governor Gavin Newsom is reminding Californians not to let their guard down. In fact, he tweeted this message last night saying COVID-19 has not gone away. Wash your hands, practice physical distancing, wear a face covering. Your actions can literally save lives. And we should also mention San Diego County has launched a website where you can find out all of the various testing locations. And we do have a link to that on our website at CBS8.com. We are live along the Embarcadero. We'll send it back to you. Netta, thank you so much. We do want to take a look at the, some of the latest coronavirus numbers right here in San Diego. County health officials reported 126 new cases yesterday for an overall total right now of 9,440. Now, the average percentage of positive tests right now, it's under 3%. It's about 2.9%. There were no new deaths yesterday, leaving the total right now at 319 people. In other news this morning, a deadly police shooting of a black man in Atlanta sparked some fresh protests over the weekend. The prosecutor is suggesting that the officer who killed Rayshard Brooks faced felony murder charges, even after video shows the suspect grabbing that officer's taser and pointing it at the police officer. That officer has been fired from the police department, and now the police chief in Atlanta has resigned. Two minutes and 16 seconds before they even checked his pulse. Well, the protests seem unlikely to let up either. Republican Senator Tim Scott will introduce a police reform bill this week. The White House says reducing immunity for police officers is a non-starter, but that is something that Democrats are right now asking for.
Meanwhile, California's attorney general is being asked to investigate the death of a young black man who was found hanging from a tree across from the city hall in Palmdale. The sheriff's department said 24 year old Robert Fuller committed suicide, but his family suspects foul play. Two weeks ago, another black man was found hanging from a tree in neighboring San Bernardino County. Officials say there are no signs of foul play, but detectives meanwhile are still investigating. Stella. Time now for the morning rush. Starting today, La Mesa businesses devastated from the riots weeks ago can begin taking steps to receive economic relief. Affected businesses are being asked to register on the East County Economic Development Council website. Money will then be distributed from the La Mesa Disaster Recovery Fund starting the week of June 29th. The money was raised through donations through a GoFundMe account. Over $190,000 was raised. And the San Diego Black Chamber of Commerce, along with local business leaders, announcing a new grant fund to help minority-owned businesses during the pandemic. Pandemic. A black business relief grant fund announced it in downtown hopes to raise uh, $1 million in the next 60 days. This is to offset the economic hardship brought on by the coronavirus. The cry is unbelievable. They have applied for every loan, grant, uh, PPP that's out there, all the, all the stimulus funds and have been denied. For more information on the Black Business Relief Grant Fund, you can visit our website at cbs8.com. Firefighters trying to figure out what caused a vegetation fire in the Bayho neighborhood. It threatened homes at one point, leading to some evacuations. The fire started at about 4 o'clock yesterday in the afternoon in a canyon just off the 5 near Leather Street. The fire burned four acres. No homes were destroyed. Well, today, a number of cool zones will open up across San Diego County after most of them were shut down during the pandemic. They will have some new rules and restrictions, though. News 8's Chris Grow joins us live from Spring Valley, where one of them is expected to open up. Hi, Chris. Good morning, Heather, and a lot of people have been waiting for these to reopen. Remember, they've been closed throughout the pandemic, and back in May, we heard potentially that they could be reopening soon. Well, today is the day that these seven will be finally reopening. Of course, things are going to look a lot different, but maybe a lot more similar to what we've been seeing in other areas of our lives, and these protocols and rules are going to be strictly enforced. So starting today at noon at these seven locations, all visitors and staff will have their temperatures taken before they're allowed to go in. Facial coverings will be required at all times while you're inside these cool zones and physical distancing must be followed. Now, these seven locations uh, were not open last week when we saw all these record high temps in some parts of our county, uh, but they are open now and they will be open moving forward so long, obviously, as we don't see a spike in cases across the county. Now, these seven locations are located in some of the hottest spots of our uh, county. They include here at the Spring Valley Community Center, but also Borrego Springs Library, Fallbrook Community Center, Lakeside Community Center, Portero Branch Library, the Santa Isabel Nature Center, and the Valley Center branch library. Now a good uh, notice about this is that those library locations doesn't just because the cool zones are open doesn't necessarily mean that the libraries have reopened. In fact, the county wanting to make sure that they are very clear that just because these cool zones are opened at some of these libraries again does not mean that those libraries are reopened. So again, these cool zones is going to be reopening today at noon. They're asking for strict physical distancing as well as those facial coverings. And if you want that list of the zones that are open, go to our website, cbs8.com, and click on the story link. Guys, back to you. Chris Gray reporting live for us from Spring Valley this morning. Chris, thank you so much. Coming up next here, a former U.S. Marine found guilty of espionage in Russia. We'll have details on that story and how long he could end up spending behind bars. Also, a woman caught in a controversial viral video is now apologizing to the man that she says she made false accusations against. Those stories right after the break.